In part three of our mini-series covering adjusting entries, we're going to cover expense-related transactions. If you haven't watched part one, I'll link it up in the corner. And I recommend you start there. Otherwise, misery, despair, sobbing. Nobody needs that. Welcome to Accounting How To. I'm your host, Carolyn Grimm, and that's my sidekick, Terrence, and we're here to put the fun in accounting fundamentals. So when we're talking about doing adjusting journal entries, the reason for that is because we may have transactions that have not been captured in our accounting records, and we need to make sure that our balances are accurate as we close out the month. So when we're talking about adjusting entries, the first thing we need to talk about is, is it a revenue-related transaction or an expense-related transaction? Well, in this video, we're going to be talking about expense-related transactions. So once we've determined that it is something that's going to impact an expense, for example, prepaid insurance and insurance expense, then we need to determine whether it is an accrual or a deferral. Accrual means that the cash came after. Deferral means the cash came before. So we paid our insurance premium for a year. The cash came before we got the benefit of our insurance policy because it's spread out over a year. And then we need to look at which accounts are being affected. So when we're talking about expense-related adjusting journal entries, what we're looking at is assets and liabilities and those are getting matched up with an expense of some kind. And don't let that twist your brain yet, because we're going to go through examples so that you can see this in action. Every adjusting journal entry that we do is going to impact one balance sheet account, either assets or liabilities, and one income statement account, either revenue or expenses. In this case, we're talking about the expense side, so you can probably already tell we're going to be dealing with expenses, not revenue. So let's take this to specific transactions so that we can understand it better. Let's dig in. So here's our first transaction. Now, if you watched my Analyzing Transactions video series, we already saw an adjusting entry. They slipped it in on us. So here is the classic one that our accounting textbooks like to use. We use $100 of supplies that we purchased previously. So our original transaction would have been something like this. We bought supplies for $500. So we're increasing our asset called supplies. And in this case, we'll say we paid cash. It could have been accounts payable, but let's say it was cash. So now we have what essentially is an inventory of supplies that we will be using up as the month goes on. So we get to the end of the month, we do a quick tally on our supplies closet, and we find out that we have $400 left in our supplies closet, which means that we have used up $100 worth. So now we need to move that out of our supplies asset account and into our supplies expense account. So when you use up an asset, it becomes an expense. So we're going to do an adjusting journal entry, and it is going to be a debit to supplies expense for the amount that we've used up. We can now recognize that expense, and we're going to reduce our supplies asset, our inventory of supplies account, by $100 by crediting it. So now the balance in our supplies account will be the $500 minus the $100 that we just took out. So we still have a supplies balance of $400 on our balance sheet. And you'll see that we did one expense account and one asset account. So we've got a balance sheet account and an income statement account. Now let's say we have either a store or a factory and we are buying either raw materials or merchandise that we're going to then sell to our customers. So this works the same way as our supplies and supplies expense transaction did. In this case, we're going to use up $500 of our inventory. We've either turned it into a product if we're running a factory, or we have sold it to our customers if we have a store. So we used $500 of inventory that we previously purchased. So the original transaction would have been something like inventory, $2,000, and cash, 
$2,000 or accounts payable, it doesn't matter. But the inventory piece of it is an asset. This is something that we own as the business that we are going to then use to make money. So it is an asset. And as we use that up, it's going to become an expense, just like our supplies and supplies expense. Now, in this case, we're going to have a new expense account called cost of goods sold. If it's a retail store, you might see it called cost of merchandise sold. Both of those, cost of goods sold, cost of merchandise sold, those are expenses. So they have a normal debit balance. They increase on the debit side, decrease on the credit side. So we bought $2,000 of inventory. Right now on our balance sheet, it says we have $2,000 in inventory, but we actually don't because we've sold 500 of that. So once we sell that merchandise, we now can claim the expense. So we put it in our inventory holding account. It's there for us to sell. And now it's no longer there for us to sell. And we have to recognize our expense. So our adjusting entry is going to be a debit to this new expense account called cost of goods sold or cost of merchandise sold. And we're going to credit our inventory $500 to reduce it. So one balance sheet account, our inventory, one income statement account, our cost of goods sold. And now on our balance sheet, once we've done our adjusting entry and posted it to our accounts, now we're going to see the balance in our inventory account will be $2,000 minus $500, giving us a balance of $1,500. How are we doing so far? Good? Okay, let's keep going. So now let's talk about another typical transaction that we would see. And again, the, with the supplies and the inventory, that, those were situations where the cash came before we bought the stuff before we used it. Um, so it's a deferral. Cash before is a deferral. Now here's another deferral. So we prepay our insurance. Our cash comes before we get the thing, our insurance. So we prepaid $1,200 for one year's insurance. And now we've used one month of that. One month has expired, as we like to say in the accounting biz. So our original transaction would have been a debit to this asset account called prepaid insurance. And remember, anytime you see prepaid, it's an asset. So we have prepaid insurance asset that we are debiting by $1,200. And we have cash being credited for $1,200. So we're prepaying for a year's worth of insurance. We can't take this as an expense because we have to match our expenses to the period of time where we earn the revenue. So in this case, we prepaid 12 months of insurance. We're going to split that into 12 different months. So when it comes time to do our adjusting journal entry at the end of the first month, we've used up one month of insurance. So our adjusting entry is going to be insurance expense for $100 debit and prepaid insurance for $100 credit. So we're increasing our expense because we can now claim that expense because time has passed. And we are decreasing our prepaid insurance asset because it's no longer worth $1,200. Now it's worth $1,100. So those are the typical deferral of adjusting entries that you will see as accounting students, and they're pretty typical for businesses as well. So now let's look at some accrual transactions. Cash comes after. We have not prepaid anything. We're going to pay it later on. And our everyday transactions that we do with an expense and accounts payable, those are examples of accruals. So we buy the thing, we incur the expense, and we're going to pay it later. That's an accrual. But when we're talking about adjusting journal entries, there are some additional things that we may need to look at. And one of the typical ones that we run into is wages payable. So we have incurred expense, wages expense, but we have not paid our employees yet. And the classic example of this is that the last week of the month, our employees have earned wages. We have incurred an expense, wages expense, but payroll isn't until next week, which falls in the new month. 
So we still need to claim that expense in the month where it belongs, the matching principal. And so we need to do kind of this holding account where we're going to recognize the expense and recognize that we owe this to our employees. So what's our original transaction? Well, there isn't one yet. Our employees have been punching the time clock, but we've not done anything in our, in our accounting records. So now what we need to do is this adjusting entry that will later on be replaced with a payroll entry. So we're going to debit wages expense for the amount that we owe our employees, and we're going to credit this liability, this liability called wages payable. So we're going to debit $400 to wages expense, credit $400 to wages payable. Now let's say that you have incurred an expense, but you haven't received the bill for it yet. So I'm going to use utilities expense as an example here. Now for some businesses, utilities expense is a huge number. Uh, let's say you're running a factory and you're waiting for your electricity bill to come in. It could be a huge number. So that needs to end up in the month where it belongs, even though we don't have the bill yet. So our original transaction, well, there isn't one because we haven't received the bill yet. So we didn't do uh, utilities expense and accounts payable. Um, we haven't received the bill. So how would we know how much it is? The way that we're going to know how much it is, is we're going to make an estimate. So we can look at, you know, 12 months of utility bills and say, well, we expect that our utility bill that's going, coming in will be somewhere in the neighborhood of $10,000. So in this case, we're going to say it's $100. This is a small business. $100 is a material amount, meaning it's big enough to matter. We're going to debit utilities expense and we're going to credit accounts payable. And then once we get the actual bill, we're going to do an entry based on that updated number. Now the final entry that we're going to talk about is kind of a big deal, uh, and that is depreciation. So because there's so much to depreciation, I've done a series of videos about depreciation and the different methods of um, figuring depreciation, but for the purposes of adjusting entries, I'm just going to tell you how much the depreciation is, and then later on you can go through those depreciation videos and see how that gets determined. So when we're talking about depreciation, we're looking at a loss of value in an asset. And this is completely accounting based. It is not reality based. So when we're talking about depreciation from an accounting perspective, what we're looking at is estimating the life of that asset how long we're going, to, we're going to be able to use it. And then we are recognizing that over time, from an accounting point of view, it's going to lose value and need to be replaced. We're using this asset up. So from an accounting perspective, we're starting out at what we paid for it. And then over time, we're going to decrease the value of that asset until it gets to zero on our books. That doesn't mean that it doesn't have value, that we couldn't go out and sell it. This is just a recognition of expense so that we are able to match up the use of that asset with an associated expense to recognize the, the accounting loss of value over time. So in this case, we bought a truck that we're going to use in our business. And let's say the truck was $10,000. So we're going to debit this asset in the original transaction for $10,000. We're calling this asset truck. You could call it vehicles and have all of your vehicles in that same category. You could call it property, plant, and equipment and have all of your assets within that category. In this case, we're a small business, we're going to call it truck. We might even call it, you know, Ford F-350. Whatever it is on our books that's going to help us to keep track of that particular asset. So the original transaction, truck, we're increasing our asset for $10,000, and we paid cash for it, let's say, so we're going to decrease our cash by $10,000. So one month goes by after we put this truck in service. And we have determined through a mystical method that we'll talk about in the depreciation series, where we've determined that $1,000 is what our depreciation expense is for the month. So now we're going to use another new account 
called accumulated depreciation. So accumulated depreciation is an asset, but it is a contra asset, meaning it works the opposite of an asset. So if we want to, so if we want to increase it, we're going to credit it and we're going to debit it if we want to decrease it. More on that later. So our adjusting entry is going to be depreciation expense, debit $100, and accumulated depreciation, credit of $100. Now let's look at what that looks like on our balance sheet, and this may come clear for you. So here on the snippet of our balance sheet, you can see that we have our truck asset listed at the cost, what we paid for, of $10,000. After we do our adjusting entry for $1,000, debiting depreciation expense, crediting accumulated depreciation, we now see on our balance sheet minus $1,000. So our truck is still there at its full cost. We know what we paid for it. And our accumulated depreciation is going to grow as we month by month do these entries. So if our depreciation expense for the second month is $1,000, then this accumulated depreciation will go to a balance of $2,000. So we're going to keep track of this until we have fully depreciated this asset down to zero. Again, more about that in the depreciation mini-series. But on our balance sheet, we're going to see always the cost of the truck, and we're going to see this accumulated depreciation where we're keeping track of those depreciation expenses. So this is kind of like our counter, keeping track of how much we have depreciated this asset. So those are the typical expense-related adjusting journal entries that you will see. Now in the last video of this series, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the entire process from the unadjusted trial balance to the adjusting entries, to posting to the accounts, to doing a, an adjusted trial balance and then doing financial statements. So join me for that because it's because when you start to actually apply this, this is when it becomes clearer for you. So join me with that. And until next time, stay balanced, my friends.